Hey guys, here they're like back with my mouse on video. Today we're gonna be playing, I mean, watching TikToks. So yeah, hope you guys will enjoy. Hey, let's go. God. One day, two best friends were speeding on a motorcycle, but only the driver was wearing a helmet. So the girl in the back begged her to slow down because it was scary. The driver said, okay, I'll slow down, but first you have to tell me that you love me. So she said, okay, I love you. Now will you slow down? She said, okay, I will, but first you have to hug me. So the girl hugged her tight and said, okay, now will you slow down? She said, yes, I'll slow down, but first take the helmet off my head and put it on yours. It's bothering me. And so she did. But before they could slow down, they got into a bad crash. The next day, the newspapers covered the story. A motorcycle had crashed into a building because of brake failure. Two people were on the bike, but only one survived. Her best friend knew that the brakes had failed, so she wanted to hear that she loved her, and she wanted to give her the helmet, even if it meant that she... One day... Right now... Go from... Two, this one. Story time five, I found out that there was a guy living in my attic. I'm even pretty sure there's a couple articles on this. So basically living in the house was me, my mom, my dad, and my younger sister. This story ends up taking a huge twist, so just stay tuned for that. Also keep in mind that my boyfriend's name at the time was Jacob. When I first started to notice that there was somebody else in my house was when I first started dating Jacob. Mind you, the only time anybody in my entire family has ever been in the attic is the first two months that we lived there. And it was only once or twice and we never seen anything up there. So we would notice that bits of our food would go missing. And every time we packaged leftovers, the leftovers in the Tupperware that we packaged the leftovers in would just completely disappear. And a bunch of my stuff would always go missing. For example, two of my pillows and four of my blankets gone missing. And my shoes and my clothes and even my underwear. So one day my boyfriend came over and he left around 1 a.m. So the rest of my family was sleeping. Also, I have the whole entire upstairs to myself. And my mom, dad, and my sister sleeps downstairs. This story just ends up getting really crazy, so like for a part two. Story time. Part two of I found out that there was a guy living in my attic. Continuing with the story, I go downstairs and I walk my boyfriend out to the car. Of course, trying to be quiet because the rest of my family is sleeping. So I go back upstairs. Mind you, I have the whole upstairs to myself. And then I go to the bathroom and there was pee in the toilet. And on the wall in front of the toilet, it said Jacob was here with a heart. So I took a picture of it and I posted it on my private story because I just thought it was funny and cute at the same time. And he slid up and said, um, what? And then he swore up and down that it wasn't him. So anyways, it freaked me out at first, but at the same time, I didn't really care. So I didn't really pay any mind to it. So to speed the story up, my dad had to go in the attic for something and he found an actual mattress covered in insulation. And in the corner, he found a guy. The guy looked very sickly skinny, but scary at the same exact time. So of course my dad called 911 right away and the guy admitted to stealing our food, stealing my underwear, stealing things out of my room, basically stealing from us overall, stealing our food, etc. I'm gonna give time, but he ended up being a wanted criminal, but he's in jail now, so yeah. Part two of I found out that there was a guy oh, living in- I don't know. Wait, let's go it. Story time about how I found out my husband gave me HIV while I was pregnant. So, me and my husband were high school sweethearts. He was very kind, very in tune about my feelings, and we were like best friends. We never really did anything sexual because he didn't want our relationship to be like that. We were together for six years, waited until marriage to lose our virginity to one another. The year before getting married, I noticed he would stare at guys a lot, but I would never really think anything about it because at least he was not looking at girls. Fast forward, we get married and two years later, I get pregnant and we were both excited. When I get to the doctors, I get my yearly test done for STDs, of course, but as always, I'm clean. Maybe one or two weeks later, I get a call from the doctor saying I tested positive for HIV. Let me know if you guys want a part two. Part two of how I found out my husband gave me HIV while I was pregnant. Like I said earlier, two weeks later, I get a call from the doctor saying I tested positive for HIV. I was shaking and crying and I was so in shock. And the only thing I ever heard about HIV at the time was that I only had a couple months to live. 
I couldn't believe the only man that I've ever been with gave me this disease. I thought I was doing everything right, the right way, and still ended up being in a hole. I was so nervous to confront my husband because I didn't think it was like him to cheat on me and I thought maybe he thought I was cheating. So the next day I pretended everything was fine. I lied to him and told him that my phone died and that I needed his to call my mother. He gave me his phone, I went into the bathroom and immediately I start snooping. As I'm going through his phone, I didn't see any text from girls. So I'm like, maybe the doctor got the wrong test. I'm running out of time, come back. Part two of how I found out my husband gave me a Part three of how I found out my husband gave me HIV while I was pregnant. So like I said, I went to his phone and I didn't see any text from other girls. So I'm thinking maybe the doctor called the wrong person. Anyways, I gave up on looking to his phone and I just talked to him. I sat him down and told him that I had HIV and that I haven't cheated on him ever. He looked at me and cried. He broke down in tears and apologized. I got so upset with him because I realized that he did cheat on me and I was really upset for our unborn child. So I took all of his clothes, I took his things and I threw them all out. Right before I kicked him out, I yelled at him saying, who was the girl that gave it to you? And he told me it wasn't a girl. It was his friend, David. It was good for another one, guys. I'm recording. You are? Yes. Alrighty. Right, guys. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna be shadowing this person. TikTok. No. Go for Story time about how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man when I was 14, but most people from my country, it is called arranged marriage. And it happened to a lot of girls. My family was poor, but the guy I was marrying had a lot of money and promised to take care of me and my family. He also had a six year old son, but he didn't like me. I had met him once before when my mother introduced him to us. She allowed me to stay with him alone. He was very touchy. He told me I was very beautiful and spoiled me because pretty girls like me deserve pretty things. At the end, I told him that I was scared to marry him and that I'll do more housework and I'll take care of my other little sisters. My father yelled at me and told me no. For the next week, I went throughout the whole wedding crying. My mom told me to stop because I was messing up my makeup. After we had got married, a couple months later, he grew very abusive. This is part two of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man when I was 14. So we got married and a couple months into the relationship, he became abusive. Whenever my food tasted nasty or something wasn't clean right, he called me a lazy wife and told me I was no good and he should have married someone else. His six-year-old son had no respect for me. The little boy scratched me, would yell at me, throw stuff at me, and my husband wouldn't do anything about it. I would tell him that I didn't like how his son was treating me and he stood up and tells me to stay in my place and tells me I'm just a bad mother. I'd cried every night wishing I could go back home to my mother and father. Two years later when I turned 16 I found out I was pregnant. He was so happy about it and for once he treated me so sweet. He would cook for me, clean, and told his son to be nice because his little brother was in there. When we found out the baby was a girl he got mad and walked out on me. Part three. This is part two of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. This is part three of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I this is part two. This is part three of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. So my husband was excited that I was pregnant, but when he found out I was having a baby girl, he got very upset and walked out of the room. When we got home, he started treating me nasty again. He then started putting his hands on me. He was just very angry at me and never wanted to see his daughter. It took him three weeks before picking her up. But even then, he wanted nothing to do with her. As years went on, I became quiet and I wouldn't speak to him. I would just make sure our home was clean and the children were taken care of. He would just get upset with me that I wouldn't speak to him and accuse me of cheating. He claimed that I was sleeping with other men and that our daughter is probably not even his child. I never understood why because I was always home because he didn't allow me to go out. But I soon realized he only accused me of cheating because he was cheating the entire time. Part 4 is coming up.
This is part four of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. My husband would always accuse me of cheating, but I found out he only accused me because he was cheating on me the entire time. Ended up finding out because his son told me. And like I said earlier, his son never liked me in the first place. So when I had made him upset, he randomly said, that's why my dad has a new woman. I was off about it, so I went to ask my husband about it and he admitted to it. He was very blunt about it and he told me it was because the lady tempted him. I believed him at the time, but as time grew on, I started to become very insecure. I'd do whatever he want, but it was never good enough because he still kept stepping out of our marriage. On my 19th birthday is when I realized I had to figure out a way for me and my daughter to leave him. He didn't even say happy birthday to me, and that was my husband. I had no money, I didn't own anything, but I took a chance, so I packed whatever I could, and I planned for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. Part this is part four of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. My husband would always accuse me of cheating, but I found out he only- Let me go for another one. Okay, that's enough. Um, my dad almost got arrested. Story time. So at that time, I was eight years old, and little old me was playing with the neighbor's kid, which was my dad's friend's son. Did that make sense? Anyways, my parents were watching over the boy I was playing with because his dad was working or something like that. Well, me and this boy, we were playing outside, and the boy asked me, hey, do you want to go over to my house so we could go play some games? And of course, I said, yeah, let's go play some games. So we walk over to his house, and of course, when we get there, the door is locked because his dad is gone. <laughs> But we were little and we weren't thinking. But of course, the story doesn't stop there. The boy said, I have a ball on my balcony. If you hop over, we can go play with the ball. So my dumbass said, okay, once I hop over, I'll throw the ball to you. So I hopped. I'm all disgusted. I never even got that one. So I used to work at McDonald's and I was usually in the kitchen. But one day we had extra people in the back. So my boss asked one of us to go up front. I'll do it. Okay, come up here. He showed me how to do everything. And since I didn't know how to make any of the drinks, he just made them for me and I just passed them out to the customers. I was about an hour into my shift and my manager handed me a coffee, so I put the lid on and handed it to the next customer. The customer looked at me and said, Huh, these lids must be new. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. I couldn't figure out what he was talking about, but that's when I realized I just gave him a hot coffee with a lid and a straw instead of the ones with the tab that you sip. So I used to work at McDonald's and I was usually in the kitchen. Tell me why I just remember the time that. So I used to work at McDonald's. My best friend was. T so I used to work at McDonald's. That's gonna be the end today. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Actually, I'm gonna do my friend's TikTok. Actually, I wanna do it next time. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. So goodbye.